Are you ready to impress your family and friends with a thousand-year-old recipe? It's Gravad Lox today as our special brunch series continues right here on the Moonshine Place Kitchen. Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Moonshine Place Kitchen, where today we will be doing part three of our special brunch series with a really special dish, Gravad Lox. Thousand-year-old recipe. So let's get right into it. We've started with a couple of nice slices right here of um, some salmon, which um, looks really, really good. So what we're going to do to begin with is we're going to mix a little bit of sugar, I'm going to take, well, that's probably, I'd say about at least two tablespoons of sugar. We'll start with that, okay? We're going to take some sea salt. And we want to get a fair amount of sea salt in this. The salt really, really matters. And we're going to add more salt a little bit later as well. What we're going to do is we're going to cure this salmon like they did back in the years like 800, 900. It was a great Nordic a treat. Matter of fact, um, Leif Erikson, who was actually the first European to ever come to the New World, um, he, he visited uh, Nova Scotia. It's just that uh, Leif Erikson and his people, his father, Eric the Red, they were more into fishing and hunting and trapping. They made friends with the, uh, the original Indians that were up in the Canadian area, and they really didn't care about the things that Columbus cared about. So therefore, they never got the coverage. But history has gone on to prove that it's Leif Erikson, whom this was one of his favorite dishes to eat. He was the first one here. Little history lesson today. So let's get some more salt in here. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to put some whole peppercorns in. And we're going to reserve some as well. Okay. So let's mix this up a little bit. Okay. Mix that up a little bit. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our fillets of salmon and we're going to dredge the back in, in some of that little mixture we've just made. Very simple. Salt, sugar, peppercorns. Okay. So we'll get the back dredged in that. Okay. We're going to set those aside just for the moment. Get some of them peppercorns on there. All right. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to take our Pyrex now that we're going to cure this in. It's going to take a little bit of effort to cure this. And we're going to start by putting a little shot of liquor in there, which is always good to cook with liquor. Today we've got a little French brandy, which originally they wouldn't have used French brandy, but I like to taste the French brandy when we cure our lox. So we're going to put a little bit of French brandy in there to begin with. A little bit. Mmm, smells delicious. Okay. And to that, we're going to start laying out some fresh dill. You can leave the stems and the roots right on there. It doesn't matter because we're actually, in the end, not going to eat the dill. The dill is just going to serve to add a beautiful flavor in the curing part of this fish. Okay. I'll add a little bit more right, right there on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more peppercorns to that. All right. And then we're going to put these down, at least one down, skin side. Okay. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our, a little bit of salt, or sugar, I'm sorry, sugar. We're going to put a little sugar on this. All right. Then a little bit more salt. Don't be afraid to use the salt because the salt is an important part of this as well. Okay. Then we're going to put more dill. And here we're really going to load the dill up on the inside. You really want to load it up well. You kind of want to cover it up, really smush it in there on, in the inside. And try and get fresh dill. This really doesn't work with the jarred dill. Go out and get the fresh dill. It's not that big a deal. Go ahead and get the fresh dill. But as you see, we're really going to cover that sucker up really, really well. Okay. Now, on the other half 
of our inside, we're going to take the rest of our mixture, which we're going to be adding a little bit more salt. Like I said, you can be liberal with the salt. This is just sea salt. You can use kosher salt. It doesn't matter, but you kind of want a lot of salt on it. You're not going to ingest a lot of this salt. The salt's just going to help to, um, to basically cure it. So you don't have to worry about this being over salty when you go to eat it later. I'm going to add a little bit more peppercorns in here. I'm going to put them right in the dill because we're going to end up smushing this all together. Okay, we're going to weight this down eventually here and smush it all together. And then I'll put the rest of the peppercorns in on the top here. The rest of this dill. We'll cover up all that dill, that fish with the dill. I'm going to take more of my brandy. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to soak this fish in the pan a little bit in the brandy. That'll help with the brine. The fish will make a natural brine as it's sitting. Now, what we're going to do at this point is we're going to take a regular Pyrex, just like this. We're going to put it right on the top like this, and we're going to wrap it in cling wrap. I'm going to wrap this with cling wrap, and then I'm going to weight it with a gallon jug of water, just like that. Okay, I'll balance that up. I'm going to weight this with a gallon jug of water, and I'll balance that up. And it's going to sit in the refrigerator for a minimum of three days. Okay, and we'll get that balanced up. Yeah, it's going to fall over. Anyway, I'll, I'll rig this up so it's balanced up. It'll sit in the refrigerator for three days, like I said. And after three days, the natural occurrences of this brine will cure this fish just like they did over a thousand years ago. And at that point, we're going to take it out. We're going to scrape everything off of it. And we're going to have the most delightful, delightful homemade locks that you can ever imagine. You're going to be back with us here just after this, this little break here, although it'll be a three day break on my end. And we're going to continue this little dish. And with this, we're going to be eating this with some cheese and some other things. It'll be just like you had back, like you were sitting with Leif Erickson and having lunch or brunch. Please come back and join us. This is going to be fun. And we're back. We're back. It's been three days since I talked to you last, and we're ready to take this lox out of the refrigerator, which we've had weighted down. Uh, a gallon of water is about eight pounds. We ended up having to switch over to a different way to weight it because our refrigerator was too full to do it, but we still ended up with roughly eight pounds of weight on it. Let's pull it out and take a look at it. Okay, so what we ended up doing is we put the weight on it and then we put half a gallon of milk on each side to help it weigh down. And we certainly had enough weight to do this, okay? So this will be the first we've looked at it since we have saw you last. So we're gonna take the wrap off and take a good look. And boy, does that look good. Does that look good, okay? Let's get all this wrap off. Take the top off, all right? Let me get this. Oh, it smells delicious. Absolutely smells delicious. We'll get rid of this. Okay. And this, this looks like a beautiful thing so far. I'm going to get, get some of this dill off. Let's roll this up. Ha 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 ha. That is a beautiful thing. Okay. Now, if you can tell, the sheen of the locks has changed. It's cured. It's actually changed. Right now, it looks like about the best quality sushi you would ever want to eat. Now this pepper, I'm going to go ahead and knock some of this pepper off. And the smell, it really doesn't smell like liquor at all. If you remember, we put some brandy in and I used some French brandy. But it doesn't smell like liquor at all. It smells like dill, a lot of dill. And it smells, you know, I can smell the dill and such like that and pepper. All right, so I'm going to knock a bunch of these peppercorns off. All right, the bottom piece, we'll, we'll, we'll carve that up in a little bit. But we're going to start with the top piece. 
So what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do here, and get rid of this for a moment, is we're going to do a little bit of a fillet here. All right. Now, I can, let me grab a little bit of this corner. I'm going to use a thin knife and I'm going to cut right down in against the skin. But I'm not going to cut the piece off because I'm going to need something to hold on to. So there's my little fillet. All right. There it is like that. Boy, does that look good. All right. And then what we're going to do is we want to cut very thin pieces. So you need a good sharp knife. I like this knife. It's a small one. And you got to keep your knives pretty sharp. But when you do your fillet, don't fillet it the whole way. Hold on to it like this because it helps keep everything together. And then we're going to cut very thin pieces. All right. Very, very thin pieces. We'll get a couple of these going. Okay. And that, that's a beautiful thing. I'll tell you, that just looks fantastic. So we'll get a couple of these pieces cut up. And what we'll do is we'll be back in one minute to plate this up. It's that simple. You've taken the time, you've taken the three days to cure this up. You've done it basically like they've done over a thousand years ago. It's cured, it looks beautiful. I'm gonna slice up a couple more slices. We'll be great to go plate this up. Come back in one minute. And welcome back. So we have some goat cheese here. Now they would have eaten goat cheese back in the day as well. They might have mixed it with a little dairy cheese uh, to, to make this. I like the sourness of the goat cheese with the lox. It just, it's a beautiful taste. But here's a little trick. Now many of you struggle to cut goat cheese. You can use a wire cheese cutter. We're not that fancy here, so I'm gonna take some dental floss, okay? And what we're gonna do, this is a little bit of an old trick. So we're gonna wrap up some of this dental floss and we're going to cut it with the dental floss. If I can wrap it against my finger, my fingers are a little, a little wet, all right? So let me, ah, come on, baby. All right, here we go, you ready? Now watch this, look at that. Isn't that nice? You can cut with dental floss, okay? So you don't have to go out and buy, you don't have to go out and buy any expensive cheese cutters or anything like that. Cut it right with some dental floss. So the first thing, like I said, that we're gonna do, or we have done, is cut our goat cheese. Now we're gonna arrange our goat cheese on the plate. Of course, it would have helped if I cut that first piece all the way through. Okay, that's a little better. We're gonna arrange these on the plate just like that. Okay, you can lean them up against each other. Then we're gonna take our locks and we're gonna nicely cross our locks right over the goat cheese like that. Boy, does that look good, I cannot tell you how impressive this lox comes out. It is the most beautiful thing. That's pretty. That is so pretty. And if you do a little research, you'll find out, let me move some of these around a little bit. There's a lot on that plate. But if you do a little research, you'll find out that still in Norway and all the Nordic countries, um, they still eat they're still eating gravad lox similar to this. Now everybody has a little bit different recipe they use, but basically it's the same thing, what they're doing. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of capers and we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of capers on here, okay? And that gives a little bit more of a flavor, at least that we like here. Now, capers are not necessarily Nordic, they're French, but um, it's really a special thing. Then we're going to take a little red onion. Got to have a little red onion when you're having your lox. Okay. We're going to put a little red onion on top of this. Break this up a little bit. 
You have some beautiful red onion. Haha, <laughs> looks nice, right? And to top it all off, well, hold on, we're not topping it yet. One more thing I forgot to mention is very popular in those Northern European countries. They have a dill mustard. It's a sweet and sour dill mustard. It's not sweet and sour like your Chinese mustard would be, but it's very, um, it's a very tart mustard, but boy, does it have a great flavor. So we're gonna take a little bit of their mustard that they would eat here, and we're going to put a little bit of that on, okay? Just like that. And we're gonna put a spricket or two of extra dill on just to fancy up the dish. And there you have it, my friends. There you have it. That is our Gravad Lox, another piece of our brunch that we've been presenting, our brunch series we've, we've been presenting. This has been a fun one to do. It's one of my favorites to do here. And uh, I'd like to thank you for joining us again on the Moonshine Place Kitchen. Tune in again because we're coming up to our number four, our number four show on our brunch show. And our next show will highlight some beautiful breakfast drinks that might have a taste of alcohol in them. See you then.